Erev Tov, Chavrin, mine, Steve and Benun, you're watching Israeli News Live, and of course, all eyes are on North Korea. But it's not just North Korea that we need to be concerned about at this point here, but more so what the repercussions could be as the U.S. gets ready to possibly launch a strike against North Korea. Reuters is reporting right here that the President Trump has said only one thing will work when it comes to North Korea, that is, and... Uh, and of course, no doubt, that means military force as well. It says here on, uh, on another article called tipsforyou.eu, North Korea says U.S. has declared war and they will shoot down U.S. bombers. As we all know, last week, President Donald Trump threatened uh, to totally destroy North Korea in a U.N. speech. And then this weekend, he extended the travel uh, restrictions for all North Koreans traveling to the U.S., well, now North Korea has responded, and their comments are incredibly disturbing. The nation has maintained that it is permitted to shoot down U.S. bombers, even if they aren't in North Korean airspace. That came out here today on October the 7th, that being reported. But what does it all mean? And what else is going on in the world that could ignite this into a much bigger conflict? Well, one thing that concerns me as well is the fact that Russia is getting ready to test their RS-28 Smart Super Heavy ICBM. They're planning on doing that this year in the month of October. And this, by the way, friends, happens to be one of the largest nuclear bombs ever put together. And with that test lingering there with Russia coming up, that's a great concern that of course, this may be another reason why we have to have something go down. Uh, Russia says, though, according to this nuclear device that they have now, has the ability to carry up to 10 uh, warheads on it, nuclear warheads, and in some instances could be refitted to hold as many as 15, very much similar to that of the Chinese version there of their own nuclear warhead that has that type of capacity as well. Could it be that the United States is very concerned about Russia's test on this and that running out of time to try to, well, not just target North Korea, but could it be indirectly that this is a target that would actually place Russia in the crosshairs as well? Seems like, though, that Russia is definitely not taking any chances, but let's look at some other things that are going on around the uh, world there in Syria. As we've brought out before, Russia confirms the U.S. is supporting ISIS in Syria. That's still being stated there. Two weeks after Russia released a set of satellite photos from Syria, which allegedly show U.S. special ops located in immediately proximity to ISIS positions, the Russian Defense Ministry doubled down on Wednesday and again accused the United States of supporting the Islamic State jihadists, enabling them to mount counteroffensive attacks in eastern Syria actually claiming that, of course, ISIS militants, with the help of uh, reconnaissance from the U.S., from the al Tanf region there, were using pinpoint accuracy against the Syrian Arab army, uh, which the Russians are embedded with. Now, there is a little bit more to that than what most people might realize, and that is the al Tanf base also has an airstrip that they're using drones to be able to survey uh, what is going on inside of the Syrian country there. And... Then we have this here as well, Yahoo News. Is ISIS military capital breached by Syrian regime forces? Russia kills 60 foreign mercenaries. Syrian government forces have entered one of the final bastions of the Islamic State militant group ISIS in the country, supported by the Russian Air Force, who said it had killed 60 foreign mercenaries in one day of strikes. They entered in the eastern town of Mayadin on Friday, which, by the way, is just south of Deir And it is located province of Deir and is viewed uh, as the group's new capital as it loses its grip on the eastern city of Raqqa in the face of the offensive by Kurdish Arab coalition backed by the U.S.-led coalition. A command post of terrorists, up to 80 ISIS fighters, including nine natives of the northern Caucasus, were destroyed in the area of Mayadeen, the Russian Defense Ministry said to AFP news agency. All right, it also goes on to say, it said in the strikes killed 120 ISIS fighters, that 60 of them were foreign fighters from the former Soviet republics, Egypt, and Tanzania. 
Seems like whoever is helping to recruit these guys here are certainly bringing, as it has been stated before by President Bashar al-Assad of Syria, that it's not a civil war, but rather it was at that time some 30 plus nationalities warring against his country. Now that only seems to strengthen what President Bashar al-Assad has been stating all along. Then we have U.S. claims Russia, Syria unable to defeat uh, Daesh mask Washington true goals. Article here, according to the Russian senior official, the U.S. claims of Russia and Syria an inability to completely destroy Daesh cover Washington's true goals in Syria. The claim that Syrian government forces and the Russian aerospace forces are unable to completely destroy Daesh covers Washington's true goals in Syria, where they only uh, imitate the fight against militants. The first deputy chairman of the Russian Upper House of Commit uh, Committee on Defense and Security, Franz Glintovich, said Saturday, it is a cover for the actions of the United States uh, are conducting today in Syria and Iraq, where they imitate the fight against militants, creating all conditions for ISIS or Daesh to continue its actions, Klinovic told RT Broadcaster. But you know what, guys? Here's what really got my attention, though. And that's the map here, right in here and behind me here. This map right here, this came out today. I picked it up, RussianMilitaryWatch.com. It's this particular location here in Russia. 60 Topolo M intercontinental ballistic missiles uh, were moved to this particular region here. That's just north of the Mongolian area right there. And of course, if you back out just a little bit, we can see North Korea here. And this Russian military, or these Russian ICBMs, 60 of them moved, in, moved, into, moved into place there. Of course, making it a better, easier target if they're dealing with U.S. as what Russia might consider as a U.S. threat or a countermeasure. We can already see where Russia has a huge contingency over there on their western border with, with Europe. And, of course, down here in the southern region here, uh, with uh, on the border there of North Korea. We'll kind of zoom in on that there. Not Well, they do have it right on the border with North Korea as well. They have military forces there. They have ships down in there in that sea as well, but not too far away from North Korea's border. They also have warplanes, tanks, etc. standing by in the event that this becomes a major obstacle for Russia. At least that's what that's being shown there. But then again, there were other things that I began to notice that were very uh, concerning to me that Russia may be preparing for a much broader war globally. And that is when I saw ABC News brought out Russia starts delivery of the MiG-29 fighter jets to Serbia. This came out a couple of days ago on ABC. Six MiG-29s have been moved to Serbia. And then to top that off, then we have another Russian MiG movement that came out back on September the 17th, 50 MiG fighters to, uh, to be sent over to Egypt. According to TASS Russian News Agency, they brought that out originally. Egypt Independent also uh, bringing this story to light as well. Is Russia doing much like what we see with the U.S. strategically getting their military equipment into different places and different positions for a possible global conflict? I can't be the one to answer all of that. But then again, I run across this article here about uh, Donetsk and Ukraine. And uh, we find out the same thing in the Russian language there. Ukraine asking the U.S. for certain types of heavy, uh, heavy military equipment to be brought in. It's almost as if the stage is being set. But there again, could it have something to do with the fact that Russia may be getting ready to test this super duper nuclear ICBM warhead, supersonic, unbelievable type of destructive weapon. You know, we reported this on Israeli News Live a little while back, talking about that this may be one reason why Russia has become a target before Russia has a step ahead of U.S. technology. It may be time to deal with them as well. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.